seven. Beard outside, the switch. Donchich goes, oh, what a great step! Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all is well. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I really do appreciate it. So this report came out like two hours ago, got off of work 40 minutes ago, and I was like, I'm going to talk about it. I think it's interesting. It's expected, but when you take a look at the big picture, you look at right now, yes, there's arguments to be made. Everyone's going to have their different various of opinions at the end of the day. So this was tweeted out by Ian Bagley, the most reliable New York Knicks source out there you can say. Tom Thibodeau is asked about the starting shooting guard spot. Ian Begley says so far in his tweet, and quote, with Jalen, with RJ, with Julius, we need shooting at shooting guard. When asked about it, Thibodeau says, Evan Fournier is front runner to start at shooting guard entering training camp. So am I surprised that Evan Fournier is the front runner to start at shooting guard? Knowing Tom Thibodeau, hell no. When you take a look at the amount of years Evan Fournier has played in his career, if it's with the Denver Nuggets, with the Orlando Magic, his second year with the New York Knicks, he's a pure veteran. He's a great shooter of the basketball. And like like we said here, like he said here, we need shooting at shooting guard. So this video, I'm not knocking Evan Fournier. I understand Evan Fournier broke the record for the most three-pointers in a New York Knicks season, breaking John Starks' record. And I think there's more to the shooting guard position than just shooting the ball, personally. So I think Tom Thibodeau definitely didn't answer that question the best. But he's the front runner, not saying he's starting right now, because who would be the guy that competes with Evan Fournier for that shooting guard position? It would be Quentin Grimes. And Quentin Grimes brings more versatility when it comes to the shooting guard position, in my opinion. And do I think Tom Thibodeau would start a second year player, especially someone that was taken with the 25th overall pick? And I'm saying that from like a Tom Thibodeau perspective, because I, I honestly don't think, I honestly don't care where you're picked. If you could ball, you could ball. If you put my team in the best position to succeed or win games, I'm going to start your ass. I'm going to give you valuable minutes. So when it comes to a production standpoint, when I think it comes down to Quentin Grimes' experience, I think that's one of the main reasons why Evan Fournier is ahead of Quentin Grimes. As much as we like Quentin Grimes, his quick release, good mechanics, capability of shooting the basketball, and more we're going to get into. He has a lack of production. He averaged six points per game, but you could say that falls on Tom Thibodeau, Thibodeau's shoulders or it falls on him. He didn't give him consistent minutes at the end of the day. And then you take a look at he's a second-year player, but the huge difference between Evan Fournier and Quentin Grimes is obviously defense. When you take a look at Evan Fournier, his IQ on defense is horrible. There's a lack of communication always when he's out there on the defense side of the basketball. He doesn't bring you much versatility on defense because of his lack of athleticism. And it just seems like he doesn't really play with that much heart on that side of the ball. While you take a look at Quentin Grimes, despite him being three inches shorter, standing at six foot four, and then you look at Evan Fournier that is six foot seven. Even though I don't think Evan Fournier plays like he's a six foot seven player, you look at RJ Barry. He plays with strength. He plays with physicality. You could tell he's a big guy out there on the floor. Evan Fournier doesn't attack the basket strong. He puts up these floaters in the lane. He does a good job relocating, knocking down threes. But you look at Quentin Grimes on the defense side of the basketball, he gets up in guys' jerseys. He does a good job bottling guys up. He has quick hands. He reads the passing lanes very well. And one of the main reasons it's just so important to have a defensive player at the shooting guard position, maybe there's a lack of athleticism when it comes to shooting guard position if you go on to start Quentin Grimes, but you could say it would be the same thing with Evan Fournier. These guys aren't high, elevating, fantastic athletes, but... It helps more than people think having a good defense player at the shooting guard position, not just when it comes to one-on-one, -on -one, when it comes to the overall success of this team, and especially R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett was asked to take on these big-time assignments on the defense side of the basketball last season, and when you have one of your top scorers or one of your top scoring options, you need them to take breaks on the defense side of the basketball. I'm not saying be lazy and not try, but they need to be able to take plays off because Think about it, R.J. Barrett's already going to get a good majority of minutes. He's going to get a lot of minutes under Tom Thibodeau starting. He's going to be putting so much energy towards the offense side of the basketball. He's going to be defending one of the top options on defense. He's going to be extremely fatigued, which is going to affect him on the offense side of the basketball, or even towards the tail end of games when he gets fouled and he's heading to the free throw line. He's going to be extremely fatigued. I'm not comparing R.J. Barrett to Luka Doncic. We know Luka Doncic is amazing, and we know Luka Doncic is way better than R.J. I'm just saying that because I know some people are going to be like, oh, you're comparing R.J. to Luka. No, the difference between these two things also 
is Luka Doncic has versatile, long defenders around him that he's able to afford to take plays off defensively and put more energy towards the offense side of the basketball. Well, Quentin Grimes would be able to help out RJ in that department. I think Quentin Grimes is more versatile than people think. Yes, he's only 6'4", but he's pretty strong. He's a brick house when you watch him, especially on the defense of the basketball. And he does a pretty good job defending the post. Yes, maybe you'd like someone that's more athletic, someone that's you could say taller out there on the floor and brings you maybe a little more length. But when it comes to helping out RJ on defense and just providing him more energy towards the offense side of the basketball, I think that would be absolutely huge starting a Quentin Grimes there. And I really hope it's not an ego thing or a contract thing why Evan Fournier is ahead of him because I think one of the main reasons, because like this is before training camps even started, entering training camp, Evan Fournier is ahead of Quentin Grimes. I don't give a shit that Evan Fournier is being paid more money than Quentin Grimes. I don't care that Quentin Grimes is a second-year player. Yes, we need to see more production out of him. And I respect Evan Fournier shooting the basketball. He broke John Stark's record again. I respect that. And I actually thought he was pretty underrated when it came to hitting big shots. And sometimes those big shots were kind of covered up due to our poor defensive play down the stretch of games. And us not being able to close out games or Julius Randle getting the ball and not being able to execute on a big shot down the stretch or whoever ends up catching the basketball we make a low IQ play he has hit some big shots for us not just the Celtics games he even hit a big shot against the Nets that we went on to lose so he's hit some pretty big shots for the New York Knicks but there's more to the game when it comes to shooting shooting guard position than just shooting and I believe Grimes brings more of an element than just shooting playing defense besides him like having really good mechanics he actually has pretty solid vision out there on the basketball floor his handle do i think it needs to get a little tighter yes but evan fournier's handle is not the best in the world as well so i really think it's an experience factor why evan fournier is ahead of quentin grimes right now but it's really puzzling it's like i'm starting to question those reports you should question any new york reports i always thought it was bs that tom thibodeau liked quentin grimes more than rj barrett and was okay if rj barrett was traded and all that but but I believe these came out by really reliable sources that the New York Knicks were really hesitant to throw Quentin Grimes in a deal for Donovan Mitchell. Do I think we would have gotten Donovan Mitchell? Hell no. I think Eagles got involved and Danny Ainge did not want to trade Donovan Mitchell to the New York Knicks. But if Quentin Grimes is valued this much by the New York Knicks, and again, Evan Fournier is the front runner right now. He's the front runner. But Quint, you valued Quentin Grimes this much and... Like, if you valued Grimes this much to a point that, for, like, Quinn Grimes and Fournier, there should be no front runner right now if, if you really truly believe in Grimes right now. Everyone should have a clean slate when it comes to training camp. That's my opinion, unless you have, like, LeBron James or something on your basketball team. That's a totally a different story. I don't care where Grimes is picked. If he could ball, he could ball. If he puts you in the best position to win games, he puts you in the best position to win games. Like, I don't care what he looks like. I don't care where he was drafted. I don't care if he's a top three pick. I don't care. If he's good enough, you play him. Is he going to be good enough consistently? We'll see because he got inconsistent minutes. At one point, yes, he did get kind of consistent minutes. But my level of consistency, like seeing what someone could truly be, I don't think he got enough. Shot creation-wise, do I think he's the best in the world? No, but maybe there's more there that he's kind of restricted in a box and he's not put in the position to be successful. Maybe Evan Fournier brings you a little more consistency. You know, making the right plays, had more experience in the NBA game, or even playing overseas. But let's just say, yes, Grimes' lows may be lower, but his ceiling is higher. But you could also say, if Grimes' shot is off, he provides defense. Evan Fournier, when his shot's off, yes, he can get to that floater, but defensively, he doesn't bring much. He's not a great distributor. You know, sometimes he takes very low-quality shots. He's a hot and cold player as well, so at least Grimes, we know, is going to always bring full-time effort. And is Evan Fournier going to be here two two or three years from now? No. Quinn Grimes, possibly, yeah. So we need to give Grimes a head start. I'm tired of us, like, giving these guys such slow starts, and then when we finally go on to play them, it's like they lack confidence, or they're not in the position to succeed. They're on their second or third coach, or something like that. But Tom Thibodeau, if we like it or not, he's, like, I'm not saying a tank or anything like that. But I'm just saying, hopefully he makes the right decision. Whoever plays the best in training camp should start. But actually, I don't even think that matters to Thibodeau. If Grimes balls out and he's better than Fournier in training camp, I still think Fournier starts because of experience alone. But I hope it's not an ego thing. Would Fournier even accept a bench spot? 
if Grimes is playing better, he's playing better. I don't care about the contract. Brian Dable, head coach of the New York Giants, he was this wide receiver that got paid over like $70 million a summer ago. But he's not putting the work. Looks like there's not great chemistry there. He's barely playing for a reason. If you're not working hard, if you're not earning your minutes, or you have to earn, like, you have to earn your shit after putting in work. I'm not saying Fournier is not putting in work. I think he actually is. But I just hope that's Thibodeau's approach. I don't care how much money you're getting paid. Whoever the best player is, I'm going to go on the start. We'll see what goes on to happen. Evan Fournier is the front runner to start a shooting guard. What would your decision be in the long term? Like, I want to build a longevity, consistent winner. I'm not saying Grimes would be that guy we go to the championship with or anything like that. But the recipe of success for today's NBA is 3 and D. The Jazz valued that. The New York Knicks apparently value that. But when Tibbs is trying to win right now, I don't think he looks at high ceiling. Like, like I think he just looks at this guy's been in the league longer, so he's going to give us a higher chance to win or a better chance to win. I don't think he looks at Grimes has talent. He's younger. Like, maybe we'll go through more bumps, but when we start winning games, it's going to be more because there's more there. I think he'll rather go with the steady guy that's been in the league longer than someone that's younger could provide us more upside, if that makes sense. Let me know down below your thoughts. I really appreciate your support. Peace out, y'all.